It is a warm afternoon here in Columbia, South Carolina. As the Gamecocks at three and three play host Vanderbilt Commodores two and four, two lengthy losing streaks in the league on the line. Somebody's going to break their streak here today. The big news, though, before kickoff, getting word that Vanderbilt starting quarterback the last year and a half, Ken Seals, will be a no-go today. Has been bothered with a bad hand this week. He'll be listed as uh, week to week to reevaluate on Monday, but that means Mike Wright now gets the call at quarterback for the Vanderbilt Commodores. Dave Neal alongside Ole Miss quarterback Deuce McAllister. We'll check in with Andrea Carter in a moment, but Deuce, what does this do to Vanderbilt's offense? Well, it really changes what they want to do from an offensive philosophy. Seals is a guy that can pass the football. He has over a thousand yards uh, throwing, and you know, when you put Wright into that situation, he's more of a running quarterback, so it definitely changes what they want to do from an offensive standpoint. Yeah, Mike Wright's thrown all of 33 passes in his Vanderbilt career. Six of ten last year. He's 11 out of 23 this year, and it'll be his show. Jeremy Musa now moves up into the number two quarterback spot for Vanderbilt, who is trying to break a 15-game SEC losing streak. South Carolina stands at nine, but the folks here hope that they can push past that on a warm afternoon at williams Bryce Stadium. Glad you could join us. Vanderbilt won the toss. They defer, so South Carolina will get the football first. That means that we will see Luke Doty under center for South Carolina. So after the 25, the football will rest there for South Carolina's first possession. South Carolina averaging just 22 points a game, 13th in the league. And there is Luke Doty, who will get the start again. Luke, starting to feel healthy, starting to feel better about this offense. 6'1", 210-pounder, has thrown for 759 yards, three touchdowns, and an interception. Last week, he was 19 of 31 for 167 yards. Vanderbilt's defense has been susceptible to the big play. Last week it was down the middle between the hash marks. Florida hit him for some big chunks of yardage. Jaheim Bell gets the first catch there. By the way, speaking of injuries, there will be no Dylan Wanham at right tackle today. Jalen Brooks unavailable today at wide receiver. And Juju McDowell also unavailable. All those guys expected to be back next week, but of course we'll wait uh, for the Tuesday press conference from Coach Beamer to get update on those three offensive catalysts. Kevin Harris on that carry brought down by Nate Clifton. That'll be a first down. And that's one thing that they have to be able to do is run the football. You want to get Kevin Harris going as far as you, you had a lot of production last week. Let's see if they can continue to build on that. Out to the 36-yard line. Yeah, waiting for Kevin Harris to look like Kevin Harris from last year. They'll throw it here, though, and a nice diving catch out over the 40-yard line goes the carry-on joiner. He'll pick up five on that nice grab. Nice catch here by Joyner. Both times with South Carolina has, has had first down. It's been passes on first down and not runs, and so you see them have second and manageable situations. We'll go with a two tight end set here on second down and five. Off the right side, Kevin Harris plows his way over the 45, close to the line to gain. Give him four more. It'll be third down and short. Ethan Barr, the middle linebacker, making the stop. Harris again will pick up the first down. And you see South Carolina be able to run a little tempo, but also run that wide zone to play before that when Kevin Harris does a nice job of being able to allow those offensive linemen to be able to really get up and, and, and match up as far as against that Vanderbilt front and be able to stick his foot in the ground and pick up that first down on the next play. Marshawn Lloyd will check in it right back down. Out of Wilmington, Delaware. He's carried it 36 times for 125 yards. On the year, but they'll come near side. Pass caught there. Good catch from the carry on joiner again. A former quarterback. He's found a home at wide receiver. Mahoney brings him down. Really nice job of being able to catch this football and then turn his shoulders up the field. Mahoney does a nice job of you talk about bringing somebody down in the flat in in one on one situation, and that's exactly what he does. Nice opening drive for South Carolina. Chewing up some clock.
Luke doty has been sharp on this drive. Little tap pass underneath. That one goes to Jaheim Bell. Shane Beamer, of course, in his first year. Kind of get this team over the 500 mark and pick up his first conference win. Well, they've done a really nice job with their tempo offense. They've kind of slowed it down, slowed it down a little bit on first down and being able to huddle. But after that, they've gotten positive yards on first downs via the pass, and they've done a nice job with tempo. Big hole off the left side for Marshawn Lloyd. He's inside the 30. That'll be another South Carolina first down. Bar brings him down. Lloyd does, a, Lloyd does a nice job on this counter play. And you talk about being able to have guys up front and be able to lead. Nick Muse is the lead blocker in that situation. Picks up the first down. The joiner will check in. That'll slow the pace down a bit as it. Officials will allow Vandy to sub if they want to. They decide not to, so we'll play on. It's play clock under 10 seconds. Lloyd will be stopped by Anthony Orgy. The South Carolina offense averaging just under 130 yards rushing per game. Throwing it for 209 a game. Total yards, 336. That's 111th in the country, 13th in the conference. Doty keeps it. A little high on the toss. He was trying to hit Josh Van and overthrew him. It'll be third and seven. And that's that RPO look really where he has the option of being able to run it. Obviously, the first option is to get it to the running back, and then the third is to be able to get it to the receiver there. Just got it. It's a hard throw. You have to be able to take some off of that football as far as that throw is concerned. Doty pressure comes, slides to his left, throws, and it's caught around the two yard line. It looked like Bell was going to be the intended receiver, but they overthrew it and hit Van down to the two. It'll be first and goal, 25 yards. What I really like is the way that Doty works this pocket. I mean, there's probably two guys right there around his ankle, and he does a nice job of being able to keep his eyes down the field. And he, like you said, Dave, he's able to find Van. I don't know if that particular throw was to Van, but he was right there on the money for it. And a nice job by Doty being able to move in the pocket with the pressure by Vanderbilt. The 11th play of this drive. First and goal. Doty, quick hitter, near side. Passes, caught, touchdown. South Carolina, Nick Muse on the reception. Hey, this is almost just like a pick play, and they were able to just hit Nick Muse. You know, he's got a blocker in front of him. It's just a quick, quick little out for him, and it's a, it's a score. And so nice first drive by South Carolina, mixing in a lot of runs as well as passes on first down. Going after by Parker White is up and good. He remains perfect in field goals and PATs this year. 12 plays, 75 yards. Just a methodical drive to start this one at williams Bryce Stadium. And South Carolina leads after one possession, 7-0. Back inside williams Bryce Stadium where Shane Beamer's club marched at 75 yards on their opening possession to take a 7-0 lead. Vanderbilt about to have their first possession of the game. Boy, just a solid drive. Luke Doty. In complete control of the offense. It's kind of a nickel and dime possession. Fair catch called for over the 15 by Rocco Griffin. And now here comes Vanderbilt without their starting quarterback, Ken Seals, for the most part of the last 18 months. They'll turn things over to the sophomore Mike Wright today out of Fayetteville, Georgia, by way of Woodward Academy. Young man is 11 of 23 this year, throwing the football just 95 yards, a TD and an interception. He has had spot play. 
again, he, he brings that change-up pace, so they try to get him a couple of possessions every game, but now it's his show. Talking to Clark Lee this morning about the situation, he he hopes he doesn't have to go to Jeremy Musa. He wants this to be Mike Wright's game. He just has to have some success, however he can get it. Well, and it, it, it's about confidence. It's about building some confidence in, in him as, as far as running this offense for Vanderbilt. So wouldn't be surprised to try to get him some easy throws, be able to allow him to run a little bit, get his feet under him. 21 rushes, just under 100 yards on the ground for Mike Wright. Wright will keep it around the left side, and he bounces around a couple of guys, give him five yards on that carry. So a good start. Honey Staley making the tackle for South Carolina. This bandy offense, we talked about South Carolina's woes, where they're 13th in the league. Well, the only team that they're above in numerous categories is this Vanderbilt team. They're averaging just 13 points a game. So obviously you're relying on your defense to come up big and already down seven. Right, will keep it. J.J. Nabari crashes in along with Aaron Sterling to stop Mike Wright. No gain on the play. Maybe you see the pace as far as offense is concerned. One going very, very fast. Another one huddling after both possessions. I mean, as, as far as both plays, just to be able to make sure that everybody is on the same pace. I thought he would try to get it to the halfback in that situation. They tried to run with a quarterback run up the middle, and South Carolina was all over Rocco Griffin, who left the Florida game last week with an injured ankle. Healthy enough to go today. Stands to the left of right. Throwing situation right. Running to his right. Lofts it up. Has a man down the field. It's caught by Cam Johnson. A huge game for the Commodores. They will spot him at the 26-yard line. A 43-yard pickup. That is the first play over 40 yards for Vanderbilt this year. And Vanderbilt is going to go tempo and get right up on the ball right now. Only team in the country that did not have a play over 40 yards, and they just snapped that streak. Rocco Griffin on his first carry, hit by Jabari Ellis. And Zach Pickens up front. Here is Clark Lee, former Notre Dame defensive coordinator, back at his alma mater. And it's a process, and sometimes it can be a bit of a struggle to kind of incorporate your ideas, your philosophies, your system. The whole thing with Coach Lee is he's building the program, and I think that's probably the important thing to understand in this situation. Here's Griffin. Boy, he is hit in the hole and stood up right there. R.J. Roderick. Fifth tackle this year for the senior out of Somerville, South Carolina. RJ comes up in that safety position, and, and normally that's the bats guy. You have to make someone miss in the hole, and he that's full and tackle. You know, when you look at that type of tackle, that type of play, that's exactly how you draw it up, and you want to be able to stop somebody right in the hole. Another third down. They converted on a third and five. They picked up 42. We'll see what they do here on a third and six. The ball sits at the 22. Vanderbilt on third down, it's just 32% last of the league. The option game, Griffin, nowhere to run. Swarmed by one, two, three black jerseys over there. Finally brought down by Jalen Foster, who's been a total stud defensively for South Carolina this year. Really nice job on this option, and I mean, they probably had the numbers, but Vanderbilt doesn't do a good job of blocking on the perimeter. You talked about Foster being all over the field that time. He, he makes a play. I mean, he beats uh, the offensive guy to the spot, and he's able to just be able to make that tackle in the backfield and force Vanderbilt to attempt a field goal. 42-yarder on the way. Bullivis, of course, really struggled last week, missed all three. And he is able to split the uprights, and boy, did he need that. And Vanderbilt needed that. They score on their opening possession. They don't match South Carolina's touchdown, but they are on the board. Their first points against SEC this year, 7-3, Carolina. Well, Vanderbilt had been outscored 
104 to nothing in their first two SEC games. So they got some points on the board. They trail seven to three after a possession for each club here in the first quarter. Dave Neal, Deuce McAllister, and Andrea Carter with you from Williams Bryce Stadium. So Clark Lee has to be happy to get some points and that a big play, something they have not had this season. So the Commodores getting ready to kick it off to South Carolina. Let's see how Luke Doty handles possession number two. He was really efficient in the first possession, six of seven for 50 yards. And of course, let him down the field on a 75 yard drive for that touchdown. That will bounce out of the end zone and out to the 25. Speaking of Luke Doty, let's go down to Andrea Carter for more on his story. Yeah, Dave, that last offensive possession for South Carolina was exactly what Luke Doty told me he wanted. He said he wanted to come out with an attacking mindset. When he watched the Tennessee film with offensive coordinator Marcus Satterfield, their biggest takeaway was for him to be himself, to play free, play loose, and have fun. He said against Tennessee, we were tiptoeing around trying to feel our way through the game. We are not doing that today. He wants to play full speed and have fun from the start. Boy, slow start would be an understatement for last week, the way they got off against Tennessee, but obviously a good start for Mr. Doty and their opening possession. Kevin Harris in the backfield, but they'll do a little razzle-dazzle, toss it back to Josh Van, who's dancing around, and Josh coming back near side. He is swarmed by three, four white jerseys, and he will lose seven yards on the play. He tried to come back. South Carolina tries to run this reverse, and here Van, he has to even the leverage. Vanderbilt does a nice job of having leverage. When you see that much leverage, you have to be able to stay there, stay the course, and just get what you can get and get down. You don't want to reverse because all of the pursuit will catch you. Second down at 17. Five up on the line for Vanderbilt. They'll rush four. Over the middle, pass caught. Jaheen Bell, he's to the 20, breaks a tackle. He will take it to the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina. They really a nice job by Bell. It was a three by one set and the safety took the post guy and right away Bell was able to get behind that safety and nobody is able to catch him. Nice design three by one. The safety takes the underneath route and Bell just runs the vertical right behind him and it is a touchdown. 82 yards. Parker White's point after. Up and good. That didn't take long. Vanderbilt with a nice seven yard loss on first down and then they gave up the big play over the middle two touchdowns today both by the tight ends and south carolina leads it by 11. all smiles here in columbia if you're a south carolina fan as Luke Doty just posted the longest career pass of his young career, 82-yard touchdown, tied for the 10th longest pass in South Carolina history as they now lead 14-3. to Short kick taken at the 10-yard line. Rocco Griffin right in the middle of that South Carolina coverage team. Let's go back to that touchdown, Deuce. What did you see? Well, what you have is it's a three by one. It's a bunch formation. And so Vanderbilt walks the one safety down until you really have a three look and the safety jumps. I think that's number nine, Nick Muse. And once he jumps that post route, that corner has to be able to get over the top and be able to cover Jaheim Bell. He's a little slow in doing so. And it's just a vertical route. And so really nice job. I mean, they, it, it, they flood one zone by, with that formation and with the design. And so the corner is just late being able to get over the top. Cam Smith coming over there a little bit late. Glad to have him, Cam. Going up top, Vanderbilt responds. There goes Will Shepard. He's still on his feet, dancing around. 
Will has been a big play guy for Vanderbilt this year. He's down inside the 25 to the 22-yard line, 49 yards on that pickup. And Vanderbilt looking good with the big play behind Mike Wright. And this is just a nice throw to go route. And, you know, they catch Darius Rush with his eyes in the backfield and just being able to look at the quarterback. It's just a go route. I mean, and Rush just, he, he gets caught peeking into the backfield, and it looked like Wright was going to overthrow him, but Shepard is able to catch it. Mentioned Cam Smith. He's back on the field for South Carolina. He was held out last week with an injury. Left side, right inside the 15. Helmet comes off, so now he's going to have to come out of the game, and that means we're going to see their third string quarterback, Jeremy Musa, come in for at least a snap after that seven yard pickup. Musa, the senior. He'll step in, and you talked about Coach Carr, Leah talking about, hey, look, we, we don't want to necessarily have to play him if we don't have to. I think that they do have confidence in him as far as a quarterback. You know that you can turn around and, and be able to turn, hand it off to Rocco Griffin anytime that you need to, but they've had some success running the football, I mean, throwing the football as well. Good exchange there. Griffin inside the 10 has the first down. And Mike Wright quickly back in the game. So you're always worried about the exchange, whether it's from the snap to the handoff, but Musa gets it done. And first and goal now for the Commodores. Well, I really like what the left side of that offensive line, Tyler Steen and Cole Clemens, what they did, just being able to wash it down there in South Carolina. They have to figure out a way, hey, look, we've got to slow this offense down. They haven't had this much, much production really uh, all year. Pierce comes in motion. They'll run it where Pierce was stationed to begin with, and right wrapped up. Maybe a yard. Staley and Cam Smith there to make the play. Really nice job in defending this. Normally you have an extra guy as far as quarterback runs is concerned. Cam Smith and Staley do a nice job, particularly Staley being able to fight off the block of Rocco Griffin and make that tackle. Second down and goal. Also, it's right on the eight yard line, near hash mark. Body in motion. They'll run it near side. Here's Mike Wright inside the five, down to the four. Boy, a lot of eye candy from Vanderbilt, a lot of motion. Well, it, it, it's basically, you know, it comes back to option, and that's what yep. exactly what it is. And they want to make sure and see if you're going to be disciplined. Uh, South Carolina, they do a nice job of being able to take the pitch guy away, being able to collapse on the dive. And so now you just have to worry about Mike Wright being the quarterback and being able to stop him and slow him down. Mike Wright, two of two throwing, 94 yards. He also has five carries for 17 yards. South, South Carolina is going to get a timeout. I mean, uh, Vanderbilt is going to get a timeout here. Barkley hustling down that far sideline to get that timeout. So 156 to go here in the first quarter. Clock continues to run. Of course, it will be stopped and reset. As Vanderbilt's knocking on the door. And with that, let's get in our first update of the afternoon. Dari, what's going on? All right, guys, yeah, let's update Georgia, Kentucky. Finally, some points. They came first play of the second quarter via James Cook. Stetson Bennett finds him across the middle. Cook takes it in, and the dogs on the Cats, 7-zip. Thank you, Dari. Of course, a busy early window today. Some of the surprises, I think LSU kind of shocked some folks, and Kentucky trying to shock some folks up in Athens against the number one Georgia Bulldogs, but, man, I... I not a whole lot of weaknesses for Kirby Smart's club right now. Well, if, it, if you're going to talk about a weakness, it's, it's going to be the injuries. And, you know, that's the one yeah. thing that they've had to kind of deal with. But they've got so many players and playmakers. That defense is, you know, that, that that's one and that's rivaling some of the best defenses ever. And just to be able to score a touchdown on them, you've done yourself pretty good because they have been stingy. Well, let's take a look at which players are kind of a big deal in today's game. Brought to you by our friends at 
old trapper and you've mentioned Rocco Griffin a couple times today and they're going to need him to be a factor in the run game and of course we've mentioned Jalen Foster on the back end these two guys are pretty easy to pick out well definitely easy to pick out you talk about playmakers that have to be able to make plays and, and, and with Mike Wright taking over as quarterback a lot of that pressure offensively is going to fall on Rocco Griffin and Jalen Foster like you talked about he has just been a madman for that defense and for, for South Carolina we're going to see if he can make another play for them well, he'll need to make a play here as Vanderbilt's looking at third and goal from about the four-yard line after the timeout. Let's see what they have dialed up for Mike Wright and company. Griffin to his right. They got man coverage on the outside going that direction, trying to hit Shepard in the corner, and he can't hang on. Incomplete. Darius Rush back there in coverage for South Carolina. Vanderbilt goes with the fade route, and it's a pretty nice thrown ball. Shepard is able to get one hand up on it, uh, and, you know, it looked like that he had a chance to get it, but he only was able to get one hand up, and so interesting choice. It was to the wide side of the field as well. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and goal from the four-yard line. Bad snap. Griffin picks it up, but he's slung to the ground at the three-yard line by Zach Pickens. It looked like he was going to get into the end zone, but Pickens made a heck of a play. Dave, when you look at this play, it, it's remarkable that Rocco was able to just to scoop it up. And Pickens, he sees it. He sees it goes on the ground, and it looked like Rocco Griffin was about to score. And Pickens is able just to sling him down with one arm. Basically, he's able just to pull him back and stop his momentum from being able to score. And you see Vanderbilt with the early gamble on fourth down to try to get it in. That's why I was kind of surprised if you, you were deciding to go for it on fourth down that they didn't try to run it to get it a little closer on third down. Turnover on downs. We'll give it back to South Carolina now. They have scored touchdowns on their first two possessions. Here's Doty. Keeps it himself, and he is hit. No gain on the play. Nice job by Maxwell Worship from his safety spot. We saw South Carolina kind of run this play early, and Doty decided to throw it. This time, he's running it all the way. And Vanderbilt. Worship really sees it, does a nice job as far as open field tackle to be able to limit his game. Second down and eight. Couple of tight ends. Doty will throw out of the end zone. In trouble, hit as he throws. Just did get it away before he hit the deck. Ethan Barr puts a tremendous amount of pressure on this play. Also, the Ricky Wright does a nice job of being able to pressure Doty, and that's just them being able to fight one-on-one -on -one blocks and make a play in Doty. If he's able to stay up, he's got a receiver coming coming uh, open on that over route, but the pressure by Vanderbilt by Wright and Barr forces the incomplete. So still a dangerous situation here for South Carolina on third down and eight. Under a minute to go here in the opening quarter. Pressure comes. Doty sees it, breaks a tackle, and will be shy of the line to gain, but a defensive stop for the Commodores. Ricky Wright chases him down. Pressure came from Gabe Judy Lolly out of the secondary. You see that you see Vanderbilt be able to bring pressure back to back plays and they do a nice job of being able to one guy right taking him outside and then the other guy Gabe Judy coming inside and being able to make the quarterback Luke Doty have to step up and not have anywhere with the, to go with the football. Kroger will take a favorable South Carolina roll inside the 40. 
But give Vanderbilt's defense, which hasn't had a whole lot of success this year, some credit getting a stop there. And the football back to their offense after a 54-yard punt. That'll do it for the first 15 minutes. South Carolina leads it 14 to 3. Back to Williams Bryce Stadium here in Columbia right after this. So we'll flip sides of the field. Begin quarter number two here in Columbia, South Carolina as Vanderbilt trailing 14 to 3 after 15 minutes of play. Mike Wright getting the start at quarterback today. If you're just joining us, Ken Seals, their starter the last year and a half out with a hand injury, will be reevaluated next week. We'll see what the prognosis is for him moving forward. But Mike Wright has done a nice job with this offense. Patrick Smith, his first carry today, brought down by Pickens. Dave, he's really done a, a, a pretty good job in the quarterback run game, but also throwing the football. And that was probably the one question mark that you had about him when he took over as far as quarterback for today. He has done a really nice job of being able to keep his eyes down the field and be able to hit some of his playmakers, particularly Will Shepard. Yeah, two plays over 40 yards already in the first quarter. Didn't have any plays over 40 yards from scrimmage until today. Little bootleg right stops, throws underneath. There is Shepard. He is walloped, and that ball stays in the air and finally picked off. They're going to say incomplete. I guess Brad Johnson got it, but after it hit the turf, and Shepard is still down. David, it's going to be interesting. Did this football hit the turf, or did one of the South Carolina players? be able to tip it and, and, and hit it, you know, as far as kick it up. There were probably three or four guys that got their hands on it. Shepard is just running an over route. And the one thing that you want from a quarterback, you've got to be able to see the defender hanging over. And so you see it pops around a couple times and South Carolina eventually catches it. It'll be interesting to see if that football did hit the ground or not. Jalen Foster had that big hit on Shepard, who was up on his feet. They're going to take a look. I, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on our officiating crew, and now they're going to run down and take a look at it on the monitor. So they're going to take a closer look at that. The two plays that we saw, there was nothing there that, that showed me that it hit the ground. But remember, the, the call in the field was incomplete. So, well, and the one thing that we 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 can't our view from it right now. The players are to our back. What's interesting is the ref that called it incomplete, he was looking directly at it. So his view is not obstructed at, at, right. at all. From where we're sitting, both of those players, you know, we're, we're kind of blinded by his back. And so, you know, the one question is when you look at it, we feel like that it is not an, an, an interception yeah. or we, we, we could not see. But I think you have something else as well. Yeah, they're, they're going to also look at this as a potential targeting play. Jalen Foster, who has been a tackle machine from his safety spot this year. 52 stops, three today, along with four interceptions. Again, it's just hard. Yeah, I'm with you, Deuce, on, on whether that was a catch or not. It's like we're screened every shot we have, basically. But the official that made that that call was had a much better look at it than, than we do and did. And well, then part two of that was, is there targeting involved in that? So a lengthy decision from our replay booth. Yeah, and the, and the, the, the person that did eventually come up with the interception was Brad Johnson, the linebacker. He does eventually come up with the interception, or at least the football, if if it is an interception once it was tipped around a couple times. But like, like you said, this officiating crew has a couple of different things that they are looking at in this review process. 
that would be a huge loss if Jalen Foster is not available. After video review, the rule in the field stands. There's no targeting. It's an incomplete pass. Third down. Yeah, I, you know, I think because it was ruled incomplete, I don't think there was anything there to overturn that. And I certainly didn't see anything there that would warrant a targeting on Jalen Foster's part. It was just a football play, a very physical one at that. And now Vanderbilt will have it third down and seven from their 41. Little option game. He'll pitch it out to Patrick Smith. He is walloped right at the 40-yard line by David Spaulding. A transfer from Georgia Southern. Nice job by defensive coordinator Clayton White being able to show pressure. It looks like it's going to be zero pressure across the board. Vanderbilt checks to this option like we've seen them do a couple times. And in doing so, they, they drop everybody out. So it's actually zone. And so they have multiple guys to be able to cover that option. And they're able to come up with the stop there. Harrison Smith to punt it away. What good booming kick. My goodness. That will hit it to one. Does it take a Vandy bounce? It does. And down by the Commodores at the one yard line. A 58 yard punt down at the one. So South Carolina back to back possessions backed up. Boy, do we have a good one coming up tonight at 7.30 Eastern time from Knoxville. It's the Rebels and the Volunteers. Matt Corral leading number 13 Ole Miss against 4-2 Tennessee, who uh, looked very impressive and has looked impressive the last couple of weeks out offensively under Josh Heupel. That's our SEC Saturday night matchup, and these are two quarterbacks. Tennant Hooker's really coming into his own as well for Tennessee. Should be a lot of fun. I think the over-under on that was 82. And that may be a little light. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. We had an opportunity to see Tennessee a couple weeks ago when they played Missouri. I mean, look, they've got offensive playmakers all over that field. It would be the, the over under 82 would be the highest between SEC teams in the last 20 seasons. In fact, it would tie the highest for any game featuring an SEC squad over that span. 2018 playoff game between Alabama and Oklahoma right around that number as well. Brendan Harris, the injured Vanderbilt Commodore on the back end of that defense, the senior out of Chattanooga. So we will step aside as they attend to Mr. Harris back in a moment. All right, OK, in studio, Georgia has struck again in the battle for the top spot in the East. Zamir White, 24 yards into the end zone, 14 zip, and they just recovered a Kentucky fumble, guys. Thanks, Dar. As you look at Georgia sitting in the number one spot at 6-0. Third time last six years they've started 6-0. Kentucky, first time they've been 6-0 since 1950 under Bear Bryant. Looks like Georgia in control of that one in Athens. Here, South Carolina up 14 to three, but they are backed up inside their own five line, uh, five yard line, looking at a second down and eight. Doty to throw out of the end zone, pass is caught. That'll be a first down. Xavier Leggett with that reception, a gain of 11. Leggett knows a nice job. Doty is on time with this throw. It's just a hitch route, and you know he ended up having the safety matched up on him, and you know, that's just an easy throw for Doty and Leggett as far as the reception is concerned. Leggett's first catch of the year. South Carolina slowing things down. They were pretty quick tempo first couple of drives. Doty bootlegs near side, looking to throw, going deep down the middle. 
And just out of reach. Looking for Josh Van, who just couldn't catch up to it. Let's go down to Dre. Guys, I talked to Luke Doty about his focus fundamentally this week, and he said depth in his drops. He said he wants to stay in the pocket, let the play develop, and keep his eyes down the field, and not look for those run lanes immediately. But when he does drop, he needs to get proper depth. Against Tennessee, he said he stayed a little too close to the chaos. He wants to do a little better job today. So far, so good. 8 of 11, 143 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Off goes to Marshawn Lloyd. Remember, no Juju McDowell today. He is uh, coach's decision will be reevaluated next week. To see if he can get back in the lineup or not. So Kevin Harris and Marshawn Lloyd and Zaquandre White, your top three running backs for the Gamecocks today. Ethan Barr does a nice job on this counter play, and he's just able to sit in that hole and be able to meet Lloyd at the point of attack and comes up with the tackle. Boy, a shame that Lloyd got hurt last year in the preseason. Came in with so many expectations placed on his shoulder. Four-star running back, number eight in the country. Overthrowing Nick Mews to tight end. And it'll be another stop for Vanderbilt, forcing a punt. They'll have good field position again, Deuce. That's a couple stops in a row by the doors. Where's the pressure? They are bringing extra guys. They are bringing pressure. And you, you talk about that's the fourth time that they've had pressure on Luke Doty, and it's just making him uncomfortable where he doesn't have time to really set his feet and be able to follow through with throws. That one, he kind of had to throw early, and it's an incomplete. Ty Kroger averaging over 42 yards a punt this year. Back to Punted away for South Carolina. Cam Johnson stands at the 45. Left footer gets it away. Good spiral kick. Boy, Cam Johnson backpedaling. Did that hit his hands? If it did, South Carolina going to be in business. I can't wait to see what the decision is here. That looked very close. South Carolina wants the football. Well, it's from the reaction of the first individual. You know, the, the first cover guy, I don't think that he touched it because he allowed it to be able to roll. It would be a muff punt and wouldn't be able to advance it for the touchdown, but they could have possession if he did. Dan Johnson back to return this. I mean, he had to backpedal a good 15 yards, a 70 yard punt. But did Cam Johnson touch it as we go to break? Oh, looks like he might have pulled that right hand back just in time. Mike Wright getting the start today. Two of four, 94 yards. He's carried it five times. We'll throw over the middle. There is Shepard again, and he gets walloped again, and the flag comes in. A couple of flags will come in. I think this could be a case of targeting. Shepard pops up this time. Jalen Dickerson. Laying the wood to Shepard over the middle of the field. What a catch by Shepard to hang on to that 18 yard gain. Definitely a nice catch by Shepard. You know, and as you run that glance route, skinny post look, it's really a glance. You want the quarterback to kind of not lead you so far, and that's really where Jalen Dickerson comes Three in with the, the hit. Field. a catch completed for a first down. Personal foul, targeting, defense in the four. Tough call here on Jalen Dick Dickerson as you see him be able to come in and he leads. Yeah, I think he hits the shoulder. Yeah, he hits him with the shoulder. He leads with the shoulder, not necessarily leading with the helmet, but I mean, it's a, when you look at that play, it's almost a bang bang play. And, you know, some of that I, I can't necessarily blame on Jalen Dickerson. It's the throw where it was. I mean, the only other thing that you can ask him to do is to go low. And that, 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 that's tough. I mean, because now you're talking about taking, taking the knees out from players and so I don't know if this would be an objection yeah, for Dickerson. I, yeah, I think he hit Shepard in the shoulder. In right. my, yeah, in my opinion, I don't think he leads with the helmet as well as far as contact is concerned. And you know, normally it's the crown of the helmet is what they want to see. Yeah, looks like head up in the shoulder area. Um, Got 
After video review, there is no foul for targeting. It's a complete catch. First down, down. So that'll keep uh, Mr. Dickerson on the football field, but a first down for Vanderbilt. Credit to Will Shepard, who has been popped a couple of times today. Holds on to that one. He had 119 yards against UConn through the air, did Will Shepard. He has been their go-to guy this year. Will has 33 catches on the season now to lead Vanderbilt in that department. Chris Pierce right behind him with 29, Cam Johnson with 20. Here goes Devin Body around the right side, the other wide receiver. And you'll see that the wide receiver core for Vanderbilt, probably their most talented group. So they're going to do everything they can to get those guys the ball. The guys we just mentioned, Johnson, Shepard, Pierce, Body, can all make plays. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage, but Wright will take it out to midfield. If it stands, it'll be a first down for Vanderbilt. The illegal shift, offense. Two players went in motion and never reset. Five yard penalty for the previous spot. Repeat, second down. Things that Clark Lee talked about that Vanderbilt cannot afford to do on the road. Well, and Dave, you mentioned it earlier, the shifts, the motions that they were using earlier. You know, you, you have to make sure that you're set. And that was a really a nice play. It was able to get right out on the edge where he had the option to be able to throw the football or run it. He eventually ran it, picks up the first down, but you're not set or reset after the shift in motion. Second down and 10. Right, he's a little bit of a seam. We'll take it himself. He's out over... The 40 to the 45, and he picks up all he needed for the first down. A gain of a dozen for Mike Wright. Let's get an update, Dari. What's going on? Yeah, guys, Kentucky has put together a little drive. Not even a little drive. An impressive drive that ended with a Will Levis touchdown pass and late in the second quarter. Now the Cats within seven between the hedges. 14-7. Kentucky needed that drive. Georgia got out to a 14-0 lead. Getting late in the second quarter in Athens. Pickens able to make the tackle on Mike Wright. Gain of a yard. Back-to-back -back runs by Wright. The other one was a quarterback draw. This one really a, a power play, one-back power with the quarterback. And, you know, they've had some success throwing on first down. They were able to pick up a first down uh, to Will Shepard previously uh, on, on first down as far as throwing the football. This time they go back to running with the quarterback. The South Carolina team played Kentucky pretty well. Lost 16 to 10. Here Smith makes a man miss. Cuts it back to the 40. Has a first down to the 35. Patrick Smith on 5'10", 180 pounder out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. The true freshman had a nice game against Florida last week. Gain of 21, right again, picked off, batted in the air and intercepted. Down the near sideline goes Jordan Strong, cuts it back to the 25, down to the 22. Another turnover gained by the South Carolina defense. It's their 10th interception and their 15th turnover gained in 2021. Dave Wright is just trying to hit this wheel route to, to the running back there, to, to Patrick Smith. And, and, and Jordan does a nice job of not necessarily rushing, but he just gets his hands up. Since it's a quick throw, um, the, 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 tight, the tackle has to be able to engage him. And once he does it, Jordan is able just to get into the passing lane, and he picks that football off. The transfer from Georgia State led the country in sacks a year ago, comes up with the interception, and sets up his team at the 20-yard line. Kevin Harris, flag comes in. Right in the area of holding. Gershon Lee trying to plead his case to our referee. Offense, 52. 10 yard 
They call it on Jalen Nichols, who says, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, end up holding right there on, on surges on the edge, that defensive end, and that's that's what allowed him to be able to get to the edge. And, you know, if you're Vanderbilt defense, you want to definitely hold up uh, right there on the fringe red zone. And, and if you're South Carolina, obviously offense, you want to punch it in after your defense you know, gets the ball to you in the short field of, the, of their side. But now it's first down and 20. Doty keeps it near side. He's pushed out of bounds at the 27 by Anthony Orgy. Well, South Carolina shot out of a cannon here offensively. First two drives, 150 yards and two touchdowns, but their last two, not a whole lot to show for. Well, the first two drives, they really did a nice job of hitting you with some tempo, and then obviously we know they had the explosive play to Jaheim Bell as far as for the touchdown, but I thought that first drive, they did a nice job of mixing up pass and run, and they really did a nice job of balancing tempo. Doty, little shoulder fake going to the corner of the end zone, and that one's incomplete, trying to hit Josh Van. Mahoney back there in coverage. It'll be third and 17. This is a really nice job of Mahoney. He gets his head and eyes around late to be able to try to uh, see the pass and, you know, locate the receiver and really squeeze him all the way to the sideline. But he doesn't bite on the initial play as far as the double move is concerned. And that football would have had to have been perfect by Doty. They'll hand it off. Harris right side to the 20, to the 15. It'll be a few yards shot of the line to gain. It'll be fourth down and call it a couple, maybe three. Give them 12 and a half on that carry. And South Carolina going to keep their offense on the field on fourth down. And actually, they're going to spot it. It's going to be fourth and about four. We've seen both of these offense kind of be aggressive and go for it on fourth down. This one is a long situation by South Carolina. I thought that they were probably their best with tempo here. We'll see what they have dialed up, do a nice job of running on third and long and being able to put themselves in position to be able to maybe convert this fourth down. And Timeout taken by South Carolina. We'll talk about the fourth down coming up. Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report coming right up. Kentucky, Georgia, it is tight between the hedges. How LSU shocked Florida. Can Bama bounce back? I think we expect them to. So, I ran out of time and I hurt. Nobody else gets to talk. We'll see you at halftime. <laughs> I think that was a design play by Dari. Well done. Masterful. <laughs> That's great. See you guys at halftime and they can all talk this. Fourth and four here for South Carolina. Doty, quick throw near side. Pass is caught. Well played by the Commodores. Stuffed by Alan George. Xavier Leggett with the catch and got hit immediately. Another stop by Vanderbilt. Dave, you really have to like what Vanderbilt does. They're, they're in zone, and they're in zone, and so Leggett does a nice job. Alan George does a nice job as well, being able to come up and make that play. Leggett, he's able to catch it, but, I mean, they're in zone. He's sitting in his coverage, and so you have to make a guy miss immediately after you catch that football in the flat, and I don't know if South Carolina thought they were going to get man-to-man, -man, but they're sitting in a zone, and he comes up and makes the perfect open field tackle. Mike Bright will hand it off. Nowhere to run for Rico Griffin. Rocco Griffin, excuse me. Alan George with a great play defensive link. Speaking of Alan, let's take a look at today's player spotlight brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Of course, Alan George on the back end of that defense, the fifth year senior. How about him getting married? in July in Nashville, Tennessee. Good for him. Play a bunch of games in his Vanderbilt career.
made a heck of a play just a moment ago. Right going up top. That pass is caught and then dropped. Incomplete. Will Shepard almost with a dazzling display. It'll be third down and 11. Hey, it's, it's a fade route back shoulder, and Shepard actually has his hand on it. He has it for one, one for a second there, and they just do a nice job. Cam Smith not quitting on that play to be able to dig that football out. I mean, he actually, he caught it. He didn't control it all the way to the ground. Cam Smith didn't quit on the play, and it's just a back shoulder fade uh, that they tried to connect on. Four receiver look. Body goes in motion. Mike Wright. Better get rid of it. Throws it underneath to Pierce. Gets a block, but a long way to go. He needed to get to the 24, and he gets stopped at the 22. An eight-yard pickup, but that will be a punting situation now for the Commodores. When you go back and look at this drive for them, it's first down. Not giving the production out of first down, and so now you're in second and long situation, third and long. Your quarterback does a nice job of buying time to be able to find somebody down the field. But like you said, since they hadn't gained any yards, on the previous two downs, it's just too far for them to try to convert that third down opportunity. Harrison Smith will punt it away to Josh Van. Good high kick. This is returnable for sure. Van looking for a little bit of room. Coming near side, a flag will come in. A couple of them will come in around the 40. Boy, the Gamecocks got up to such a hot start. You thought it was going to be one of those days for them offensively, but they have uh, not kept the momentum going, that's for sure. Well, one of the things I want to see them do on first down, being able to throw the football, they did a nice job with some screens. During the return, holding, return team, number 11. The 10-yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down. SEC Network Football is brought to you by new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. Great day. A lot of tailgating going on. State Fair just across the street. Say it's busy in this part of Columbia would be an understatement. There are a lot of folks in the area and a lot of cars to go with them. First down and 10. 14-3 Gamecocks. Loose football. Vanderbilt had it, lost it, and then gets it back. They will have it inside the 15-yard line. Lloyd just couldn't hold on to the football. The Commodore's in business. When you talk about your defense having to make a play, that's exactly what you wanted to do. And Lloyd, he can't hold on to it. And they just do a nice job of just being able to make contact and put his helmet right on that football. I think that was Sujic was the guy that popped that football loose, popped it loose, and I think that was Jerkins that ended up making the re fumble recovery. And so nice job of Vanderbilt being able to flip the field, get that offense at least a short field opportunity, but from a defensive standpoint, make it a play. And I thought what South Carolina had all of their success, they were going fast with Tempo being able to throw the football, and they've really just bogged down like you talked about in the second quarter. Sujit, the freshman, didn't get to play football last year in high school because of COVID. Here's Mike Wright, and it'll be a face mask. And three officials on that, that face, the face mask call. Personal foul, face mask, defense number one. The penalty is half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Boy, he that bar, he's been solid all year. He's got his hand up in the wrong spot. He actually, they're, they're, they're covering. That's the option play, and he's, he's actually there. He's actually there to be, be able to slow it down or at least stop it. They have the, the pitch guy and the quarterback accounted for. And like you talked about, Dave, he just got tackled him in the wrong spot, got his hand up high. Well, that'll move it to the six. Couple of tight ends now for the Commodores. News football, Vandy trying to give it right back to South Carolina. I think the Commodores fell on it back at the 15-yard line. Mike Wright. 
Mike Wright does fall on it. I think he got stepped on as he's coming out as far as from under center. It looked like he got stepped on, and so it looked like Rocco Griffin was able, was going to be able to scoop it up. But Mike Wright is quick enough and elusive enough to be able to get over there and recover the football. And so you talk about this is the second time we've seen that football on the ground. New quarterback coming in, taking snaps under center. And we've seen some quarterback exchange problems so far for this Vanderbilt offense. Second and goal from the 15. Mike Wright trying to set up a screen, but then just hits Pierce inside the five. Boy, they were trying to set up a screen over there to Rocco Griffin. It wasn't available, and he found Pierce near the goal line. He kept buying time, kept buying time, and he was able to hit Pierce, and none of the linemen were downfield as well. Hand off Rocco Griffin trying to find a little bit of room. Does he get in? Yes, he does. Rocco Griffin with the rushing touchdown from two yards out. His second rushing TD of the season. You're the Vanderbilt Commodores offensively. You have to really feel good about that offensive series. It wasn't perfect by any means, but your quarterback was able to buy some time, be able to make a play throwing the football through the air. He was able to recover a fumble, and then Rocco Griffin finishes it off with a nice bully run down there in the end zone as Vanderbilt showed kind of a little tempo themselves from an offensive standpoint, and they've got an opportunity to put another point uh, after six points so far on the board. So after... An extended look at the play. It is a touchdown, and Joseph Bulovus will try to make this a four-point game with 2.53 to go before halftime. It wasn't the prettiest first and goal drive, but certainly effective. 14 to 10 now. South Carolina's lead is cut to four. You talked about here, and this is just a nice job of just having your eyes downfield to be able to say, hey, look, Chris Pierce is going to be running the over route. They were trying to they were trying to set up a screen to Rocco Griffin, and Griffin is still able to be able to get in to the end zone with a little help from some of those offensive linemen. Ben Cox pulls the South Carolina defensive player away, and Rocco Griffin is strong enough to be able to get the football over the line, the end zone as far as the score touchdown. Mike Wright has led this team to 10 points. Remember the first two SEC games against Georgia and Florida outscored a 104 to nothing. And they're doing it without Ken Seals, the sophomore quarterback. Who has started the last year and a half for this Vanderbilt team out with an injury today. They'll be reevaluating him next week to see if he can go as they take on Mississippi State in Nashville. Pearson Cook will kick it away for the Commodores. A little pooch kick. That will sail out of bounds. Not what they were looking for there, but while we got a second, let's get an update, Dari. Yeah, Dave, keeping an eye on what's going on right now in Iowa City. Of course, you know, we've got a team that is uh, called Alabama that, that could use a little bit of help. Why not have teams above them start losing, right? Iowa down to Purdue at home, 14-7 at the half. Well, Iowa sitting there in that number two spot. First time since 1985 they have been there. And they've just quietly been winning ball games, but right now got their hands full with Purdue. Purdue giving them a pretty good game so far, and Iowa, like you said, you know, whenever that number has been called, they've been able to make plays and see if they can pull that one out as they take on the board makers. Georgia up 14-7 at halftime. All right, the boys will break that one down for you when we get there. 2.53 to go here in Columbia. Pass is caught there by Jaheim Bells. And he is to the 38-yard line, a gain of three. Boy, the tight ends have been a big part of this offense under Marcus Satterfield. They have been targeted a bunch, and they, they've got, you know, three or four guys over there they like. Bell, Muse. E.J. Jenkins, a guy they split out. He's 6'7", 243. We haven't called his name yet. Slowing it down a little bit offensively. 
You know, and ever since they started to slow it down, they've kind of lost their mojo. Harris trying to find a little bit of room. He'll pick up four and a half, five yards. It'll be third and short. Nice job of Harris on this outside zone play, being able to get him close to a first down here. And a 15 through the air for Doty after that hot start on their first two drives. Harris will pick up the first down. Nate Clifton with the tackle, gain of four. The clock goes to 140. Well, last year, Kevin Harris ran for 171 yards and two touchdowns. Had an 88-yard touchdown run against the Commodores. Doty steps up in the pocket, dumps it off to Harris underneath, and he'll have nine. Orgy brings him down. Clock continues to run. South Carolina has a couple of timeouts left. Second and one at the point two. Quick throw to Van. He'll have the first down. Gets out of bounds as well. It's going to be a holding. It's going to be a holding call on Nick Muse there on the edge. It's going to come back. During the run, holding offense number nine, ten yard penalty. Repeat first down, second down, excuse me, second down. Nick Muse, he's just doing a nice job of blocking it right there against Allen George, but you can't you can't throw him or at least finish him to the ground. You, you hate to say it that way, but that's exactly what it was. Doty. He'll run out of bounds at the 47. A couple of yards there for Luke. Vanderbilt does a nice job dropping eight defenders in coverage, only rushing three guys. And Doty really not having anywhere to go with the football, does the right thing, tucks it, able to pick up a couple yards and puts, puts it really a third and manageable situation for them. Vanderbilt has brought pressure and kind of flushed it Doty a little bit as well at times. Doty pressure comes. He loses the football. Vanderbilt says they have it. Anthony Orgy untouched a straight line right to Luke Doty forces the fumble and the Commodores have it with 47 seconds to go in South Carolina territory. By the defense, first down, Vanderbilt. It's just A-gap pressure. This is A-gap pressure right up the middle. We've talked about how Vanderbilt has pressured him, and they just do a poor job. The, the line call is sliding one way, and they basically let him go up the middle until Luke Doty uh, Orgy does a nice job. Or Orgy does a nice job of being able to come up with a sack, but Doty has to take care of the football a lot better. It looks like he was trying to throw that football going forward, but I think he ends up losing it. And I know they're going to probably look at this play a little bit uh, to review it to see if it was actually a pass. But you know, Vanderbilt has to be able to take care, to take advantage of this situation. Coming up at halftime, you can watch the live performance of Mighty Sound of the Southeast on SEC Network Plus. You can start streaming that now on. The ESPN app. Yeah, I, I, I was a little surprised Vanderbilt didn't put there. There was nobody. Uh, they were just standing around. I'm surprised they didn't get there on uh, out on the field and start running a play. They've right. been standing over there in a huddle for no reason. Yeah, right away you, you you talk about sudden change and being able to get out there and try to run a play in, in a hurry. But I don't know if that ref would have got out of the way to actually give them possession. You know, and, and you know that. All right, two things at play here. Was it a forward pass? And then keep an eye on his knee. Was his knee down before he got rid of the football? Orgy just untouched, by the way. Well, that looks like a just that looks like a fumble. Yeah, I mean that that's going to be hard to say. I mean, I, he's trying to throw it away, and then you know, I don't know if he has complete control of it when his knee is going down. It's going to be really, really close, you know, uh, for them to overturn it. 
I mean, that's going to be a frame by frame look, and they will be able to do that. But I think, you know, Orgy was just able to cause that football to be able to come loose right there. Tonight, SEC football final is back, hosted by Dari. With Gene Chizik, Chris Doring, and Benjamin Watts, and the whole crew will be there to take you through the biggest stories of the day and break all the games down for you. 10:30 Eastern time, right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. And of course, coming up at 7:30 Eastern time will be the Tennessee Ole Miss game, and those guys will follow that. So a lot to talk about today. A lot of early game activity around the Southeastern Conference. Kudos to LSU. Back to back years, they put it on the Florida Gators. And Ogeron, just when you think that uh, he might be on his way out, comes up with a huge win. Well, you talk about them being able to run the football, you know, ran for probably more yards uh, just today alone than they had in the previous four games. And so you talk about a team playing for that coach, that's definitely what happened with those LSU Tigers today against the Florida Gators. A school rushing record. For LSU today. Matter of fact, how about Bo Nix from Auburn? They go and beat. Uh, on the road and beat Arkansas. Bo Nix with a great day under center, threw for almost 300 yards, rushed for a touchdown. He was phenomenal and a good win for Brian Harson and company. Brian Harson sticking with Bo Nix, you know, even after you know them them coming almost close to losing at home, and you know he goes on the road against LSU, comes up with a huge win there, and then you, you go up to Arkansas, you get another huge win, and you know, pretty good job by those Auburn Tigers. They, they are taking a long look yeah, at this. Yeah, this is really long. So let's see. Uh, when they're usually this long, that means that they might reverse this call. And they're going to reset. Just in my experience over the years with the replay system. So it's third down. I mean, the only thing is you're talking about possession and loss of yardage. And so now probably what happens is you punt it away. And Vanderbilt, you have to go the length of the field. Vanderbilt does get the ball out of the third quarter. But you would rather have it here on this side of the football instead of having to drive the length of the field. Well, I, you know, if he did throw a pass, it'd have to be intentional grounding. Correct. There's a lot to digest here. After video review, the ruling is an incomplete pass that is intentional grounding. Offense number four. The ball be placed at the 42 yard line because the foul occurred with under a minute to go in the half. There's a 10 second subtraction. Please reset the game clock to 46 seconds. It'll start on the red. So that's kind of a win for South Carolina in a lot of ways. Well, one, you get an opportunity to punt the football, and the other is they don't get the ball immediately right there. And then you talk about the 10 second runoff as well. And so for Vanderbilt, you knew that they had been bringing pressure. And so that was one of the things that you talk about with Doty when, as he sat in the pocket, just not being comfortable with that pressure, whether that's been Ethan Barr or Derricky Wright. And so they've been able to get a couple guys at, at, on him and after him. And Orgy was the one that was able to make that play there. Now we got to reset the change, but we have come to a standstill here in Columbia. In the second quarter, we've had a lot of reviews, a couple of targeting reviews. Kai Kroger, who had a career long 70 yard punt earlier today. Cam Johnson back to return this. He stands inside his own 15 yard line. So they get the chain set. Or maybe. They're still. Working on things. Fourth and a long way, I know that much. If you're Vanderbilt, you take a timeout because South Carolina is just going to run this play clock all the way down. Vanderbilt's not being very aggressive in this situation. Now, this is five seconds, so they're going to get the football less than 20 seconds to go. Rugby style kick. Takes a great bounce. Another lengthy punt from Kai Kroger. 12 seconds to go before halftime. A 54 yard punt. Out of pocket with Alyssa Lang and her own Andrea Carter takes you inside the world of SEC sports. With laid back interviews, lots of laughs, and Lang's signature passion for finding the best food the SEC has to offer. 
The show is one hour every Wednesday at 7 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. I know last week, Andrea thought that she might, she felt kind of an LSU upset. Well done, Dre. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say, Alyssa called the Auburn upset and I called the LSU oh. upset. So maybe we'll both get pay raises or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, nice job on your selections. I'll be uh, chatting with you in the middle of the week. Mike Wright gets to start today. Vandy gets the ball to start the second half, and he sprints to the end zone. It is a 14 to 10 game after two quarters of football. And let's go down to Andrea. Coach Beamer, you were clicking on all cylinders those first two drives. How would you describe the drop off offensively? Uh, not good. Uh, Got to do a better job of finishing drives. Uh, not turning the ball over, not having intentional grounding, not having dumb penalties over here on the sideline. Just not very good football in the second quarter offensively. And defensively, how would you characterize your unit's ability to adjust with Mike Wright under center for Vanderbilt? Yeah, we prepared for him after Tennessee had success last week with him and Hooker. You know, we thought we might see him today anyway. They've done a great job. I mean, really, they've hit two plays where we busted coverages on the, in the secondary. Other than that, they really haven't done much against us. we got to handle the, uh, the quarterback draws better, but the defense is playing well right now. Coach, thank you. Thank you. Shane Beamer summed it up offensively in second quarter. Not good. And I think that was somewhat generous after the way they started. They looked like they were going to put up a bunch of points today. But Vandy, give them credit. Hang it in there, down four. So with that, time to get you to the studio. Dari, it's all yours. All right, guys, thank you much. As we welcome you to the Auto Owners Insurance Halftime Report. Luke Doty got off to a great start. But then Vanderbilt did some things, slowed him down and the South Carolina offense. And we got ourselves a game after two quarters of football. 14 to 10 is our score. Dave Neal back alongside former Ole Miss Rebel, Deuce McAllister. And Deuce, obviously, in the first quarter, completely different if you're a South Carolina fan than it was in the second quarter. 155 yards of offense in the first quarter, just 38 in the second. What happened? Well, I think they, uh, you know, got away from what they wanted to do from an offensive standpoint. You know, early on, particularly that first drive, they were able to throw the ball on first down. And so you talk about second and five, second and four, or second and short. And when they had second and long, just because of not necessarily of, of the run, but maybe an incompletion, they didn't have a chance to really run that tempo with they, which they had so much success. So you can look for South Carolina to try to get back that to that on offense. And you, look, you talk about Mike Wright, his yeah. ability to be able to extend the plays, to be able to run the football, whether it was draw or the QB bash, really gave them an element that maybe uh, South Carolina wasn't completely prepared for. Yeah, Mike Wright in a starter's role today because Ken Seals out with an injury. They will reevaluate him next week, see if he can go. So the Commodores will get the football first, a short kick to the 23-yard line is where they will start. Let's go downstairs, check in with Andrea. Guys, there was a lot of energy and enthusiasm in the Vanderbilt locker room. I talked to head coach Clark Lee, and he said they got a taste of complimentary football, and they're excited to compete. Offensively, he said he's really happy with Mike Wright. He's creating like they know he can. He wants Mike Wright to keep going to Will Shepard and not overthink the turnover. He said that was just a great play by South Carolina's defensive end. You know, and I, Shane Beaver, when Andrea talked, talk to Shane going into the locker room he mentioned something that certainly is uh, you can't just push it aside and that is Hendon Hooker had some success running the football against the South Carolina defense last week so Vanderbilt even though Mike Wright was it is an unexpected starter he brings a, a skill set that certainly poses some issues for the Gamecocks tall sweep Griffin a couple of yards before he is pushed out of bounds. But certainly the light's not too bright for Mike Wright. He has uh, been composed today. He made a couple of nice plays, a couple of big hits in the pass game. And that's what he's going to have to continue to do for that offense to have some success, be able to have that ability to be, get on the edge, maybe run it, maybe throw it, keep his eyes down the field, and come up with a, you know, a, a, a reception. Griffin breaks a tackle. Oh, and he stumbles over a piece of grass. He had a chance to pick up four or five more yards, if not more. 
We've got a cleat stuck, gain seven. RJ Roger comes down and he's that safety that's forcing the play. And like you talked about, you know, Rocco Griffin, he has to be able to keep his feet up underneath him. He goes, it looks like he was planning and he just slipped. He goes down right short of that first down marker. Yeah, third down and short. Mike Wright coming near side and he's looking to run for it and he will get it. South Carolina had a chance. Devontae Staley was chasing him down, just couldn't get him on the turf a gain of seven. Well, it's interesting because you're third and short, and you go with an overload, and he doesn't have it in the flat. He goes back, he looks there. There's no one there as far as to be able to throw the football to, and you see him just be that athlete. We talked about him having the ability to run or pass the football once he hits the edge, and he shows you that he's quick enough and fast enough to be able to pick up the first down there. Body tries to cut it back. Nowhere to go. Breaks a tackle and will lose five. R.J. Roderick will get credit for that tackle behind the line. Roderick this time, he doesn't miss the tackle. Last time we saw him matched up with Griffin, and this is the second time we've seen him run this kind of pop pass play to, to Body there, and he's just nowhere to go. And South Carolina does a nice job of leveraging this play and forcing it back inside, and you talk about loss of down on first down. For Vanderbilt. Chasing the chains. Second down and 16. Right. Trying to run out of trouble, but there is hardly any room to run, so he throws it and passes caught out to the 45 by Chris Pierce. A flag on the player. See the legal formation or neutral zone. Far side of the field. There is no foul for an eligible receiver downfield. Result to play, third down. If you're Vanderbilt, you're very fortunate in that situation. And they were trying to set up the quarterback draw that we've seen them run so many times. And I guess the pass, as far as was behind kind of a, the line of scrimmage, that they decided that it was not, you know, lining down the field. Game of 11 will make it third down and five. We got to get the ball to the South Carolina 49 to move the chains. Four man rush and a timeout taken by Vanderbilt right before the snap. We will step aside as well. Back to Williams Bryce right after this. Forget coming up at 7:30 Eastern Time. It'll be a fun night of football in Neyland Stadium, Ole Miss, and Tennessee. The Manning Bowl coming your way. Matt Corral leads 13th ranked Ole Miss against the 4-2 Tennessee Volunteers. It's our SEC Saturday night matchup. Tom Jordan and Cole will be on the call for that one. Dave, I think they're looking at this play again. I think they're going to look at this play. We we thought that. There should have been a penalty and they waved it off. I thought that maybe he he caught this football behind the line of scrimmage and that's what coach Beamer was talking to the refs about. It was Lyman. They were trying to run a draw a quarterback draw but it wasn't there and he ended up throwing the football but you have Lyman down the field and I think it's about one yard. Yeah. The line of scrimmage was a 35. He made the catch at the 36. So it should be a penalty and it, it, it's probably going to back him up as well. It was close, you know, you're, you're talking about a yard. Yeah, line of scrimmage back there at the 35. You look at the top of your screen, you can see the down marker. And Pierce caught it at the 36. And that's what Coach Beamer was over there talking to the officials and saying, hey, look, they got guys down the field. And he was across the line of scrimmage because if he had caught it behind the line of scrimmage, then Obviously, the linemen down the field are fine, but that should be a penalty against Vanderbilt. Well, they're moving the football back all the way down to the 30-yard line. So, five-yard penalty for a legal man down. Phil Clark Lee not too pleased about it. Now what would have been third and manageable. 
After video review, the ruling is the receiver caught the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. That's ineligible receiving downfield, offense number 60. The five-yard penalty is enforced in the previous spot. It'll be second down from the 30-yard line. You were all over that from the get-go. Well, they were trying to run quarterback draw, and so it wasn't there, and so he kind of, we've seen Wright be able to break containment and try to create a little bit, and it was just unfortunate by a yard that they were not able to convert on that play. Now Clark Lee over there getting the information. And second down and 21 at the 30 yard line for Vanderbilt. I don't know if he's going to be able to sell it to those officials. And look, Vanderbilt called the timeout, giving them an opportunity to look at that play even more closely than they did. Well, they were going to be, I mean, and I think one of the reasons because the play clock was running down, and that's why you, you lose, what, about 10 yards roughly? 15 yards? Yeah, about 15 yards. So I guess they're not going to be charged for that timeout as well. I would have rather lose a timeout than <laughs> right, give exactly. me the yardage back. I, I'll give you all my timeouts. <laughs> Just give me the play. Uh. So second down and a long way to go. 21 yards. Mike Wright. He completes it to Rocco yeah. Smith. That's, that's a screen play. You know, earlier he was able to hit his tight end on that screen play. It's just so late developing. I mean, South Carolina does a nice job of reading it, and they actually were, were, were in a twist or a stunt. And, and the defensive end does a nice job of just staying there and being able to read it. Kingsley does a nice job of just reading it that screen that Vanderbilt was trying to set up. Griffin's catch. Doesn't gain a whole lot. It is third down now in 21. Mike Wright running, running, throwing, and incomplete. He was going to be shy of the first down. Pierce was the intended receiver. Pressure came from Jordan Strawn. Strong showing me some speed now. 6'5", 250 coming off that edge, plays that buck in position. You can see why he led the country in sacks last year with over 10, 10.5. One thing you saw, you saw him turn speed into power as far as his rush was concerned, and then you see him out on the edge being able just to really force Wright to have to throw that football kind of short and not, not able to convert that third down. over end kick by Smith. Josh Mann will watch it sail out of bounds. We'll step aside for a moment. 14-10 South Carolina. It's Saturday. Time to represent your school. Show us how big you're going today. Submit your best band video this weekend to hashtag show your Saturday. You just might get your 15 seconds of band fame. Luke Doty in South Carolina, 14 points on their first two drives, but nothing since. And they lead by four here in the third quarter in their first possession. Well, they came just flying down the gates, out of the gates in their first drive. 12 plays, 75 yards. Second drive was just as successful. Hey, our first and ten line brought to you by T-Mobile. And it will be first down and ten for the Gamecocks. Doty coming near side. Pass is caught there by Zaquandre White. Zaquandre White, who was used early on quite a bit in the first couple of games, but not a whole lot since getting in the action. It's a bubble screen, and they have the numbers outside. They were able to just leverage Vanderbilt from a defensive standpoint, and White is just able to catch it, and he was able to run. He stepped out of bounds right there, I guess it's right at the 40, 43, 44 yard line, but still a nice design play just to get a playmaker involved. 19 yard pickup. White hasn't had a carry in the last three games. They will 
get it to Jaheen Bell. They do a lot with Jaheen Bell. The tight end, 6'3", 230, and part of this offense, just a lot of options. Jane Beamer brings in Marcus Satterfield to be the head coach, or to the offensive coordinator, but Beamer in his first go as the head coach. We're talking to him yesterday in length, and, you know, he's been an assistant coach for so long under so many guys, and we were talking about just the growth of a head coach and what you learn having been in that seat when you, you've seen it through his dad and you've seen it through other guys, but as he was saying, it is totally different when you're the guy that everybody looks to. White stumbles for no gain, but it was interesting. It just, you know, like he was talking about all the things that went on just this week that he had to deal with players coming to his office and having heart to heart discussions with some guys who are going through tough times, making decisions for your strength staff, your nutrition. I mean, just all the stuff that he never had to worry about before is now on his plate. Yeah, normally it's just coaching. It's normally, hey, look, I'm a recruiter. I, I have my group of guys that I have to deal with, but now that, that group of guys has expanded, expanded so much more, and then you talk about the issues that your players are are dealing with he's responsible for helping them in those situations as well Barkley going through the exact same things two first-year head coaches boy big hole for South Carolina to take advantage and they do so it's a quandary white active on this possession we've seen Jaheim Bell be able to catch the ball he's been able to run it kind of a little bit and now he's blocking they catch Vanderbilt in a blitz and it's really almost a this play could be named a couple different things. It's jailbreak screen, and it's right into that blitz look, and they're able to pick up that first down there. Nice conversion by Luke Doty just on that, that screen play outside. Little corner blitz. They throw right at it. Jaheim Bell loses the football, and Vanderbilt will have it. Another huge play by Vanderbilt defensively. It looked like Bell was going to take it at least inside the 10 yard line, but DeRicky Wright forces the fumble. I think that was Mahoney that came up with the recovery of that fumble. And Bell, he does everything right except at the end, kind of squeezing the football. You have to be able to squeeze it, particularly on that spin move. And Wright just comes right behind him. He punches it right out. He's not down. That, that, that is a fumble. And it was Mahoney that came up with the fumble, recovery of the fumble. And you talk about just getting the ball to the playmakers. And you know, the, the play before on that screen, he was able to set a, a, an outstanding block. And this time, just doesn't squeeze the ball as he's coming out, going down, doesn't squeeze it all the way. And it's a fumble. Two forced fumbles today by this Vanderbilt defense. Here's Mike Wright, handed off to Patrick Smith. Patrick, the freshman out of Atlantic City, New Jersey, was a New Jersey Offensive Player of the Year as a high school senior. Matter of fact, one game, he was explosive, ran for 362 yards and four touchdowns. Arrived in the summer, still getting used to this offense, still learning all the nuances of this offense. Try to bounce that play, and Dow does a nice shot in the open field of being able to bring him down in one-on-one -on -one situation. Last week against Florida, ran for 75 yards after Rocco Griffin got hurt. Smith swallowed up right as he got back to the line of scrimmage. MJ Webb. Making a play, the fifth-year senior. MJ Well, he's just able to beat the block of Cole Clemens there. We're trying to run split zone, and you know, you, you talk about this South Carolina defense, particularly up front, interior. They're just winning inside. We've seen pre uh, pressure off of the edge, and you know, I, I think that you know some of the best plays that Vanderbilt has had is when they're able to get outside because that D line is winning right now. Right in some trouble. Trying to put his head down and pick up the first down. Where are they going to spot it? It is really close. I think he got it. He may have picked up the first down when it looked like he was going to be stopped well short. 
And it was Jordan Birch that's in, 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 in pursuit. Birch is able to, you know, at least force him back. But there's nobody outside on, and contain. And you talked about Mike Wright being able to make something happen with his legs, and he, he's able to pick up the first down. Rest set of downs now for Commodores, and no work out of the pistol formation. Fake it to Smith all day to throw now for Wright, trying to find somebody. They'll just throw it out of bounds. So no Ken Seals out with an injury today. Doesn't appear to be something that's going to keep him out for a long time. They'll reevaluate him beginning of next week. See if he can get back on the practice field. Of course, set a freshman record, Vanderbilt freshman record last year. Almost 2,000 yards through the air. Completed 64% of his passes as a freshman. Mike Wright. He's going to run for it again. He's got some room to pick up the first down, but a flag, two flags are down. It's going to be holding against South Carolina. On the play, looked like he wanted to hit Shepard, and, and, and he, he couldn't. It's going to be holding it in South Carolina. I think that was on Dow, the corner. There are multiple fouls against the defense. Holding number 24. That penalty has declined. Holding defense number 21. The 10 yard penalty is added to the end of the run. Results in a first down. Dave, one of the reasons that Mike Wright is able to pick up this first down running because. Uh, you know, and, and, and you can see Seals on the sideline. He, he, he wants that throw to go. But one of the reasons that he was able to pick up the yard is just they were in man to man. And so all of the defenders, the back of them, they have their backs turned to the quarterback. And, you know, obviously we, we, we know that holding was called on two different guys, but that was one of the reasons he was able to run for the first down because the defenders had their backs turned to him. Here's Smith, or excuse me, Rocco Griffin on the carry. Rocco Griffin. Pick up a couple of yards. Rocco playing on a tender ankle today. Not a whole lot of running backs available. Ramon Davis out. The guy that was getting the majority of the carries. He tore a ligament in his toe, needed surgery, so he's done. At least Rocco and Patrick. And then their third running back, James Ziegler, was a defensive back all the way up until the season started. Double reverse pass. If Mike Wright can get rid of it, he will throw it underneath and I'm going to say incomplete. Trying to hit Bresnahan. He's been quiet today. Ruled, ruled and incomplete. You see him run this double reverse and it's a pass, but one of the things that you have to do is kind of slow down. He, he kind of outran the, 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 the quarterback, and particularly that was Amir. Ramon, he's got to slow down on that play. He's got to sell it a little bit so the quarterback, you don't outrun his arm as far as him having to throw that football. Another third down. Pass caught, broken tackle. Shepard on his feet. Shepard may take this one to the end zone. He will. Touchdown, Vanderbilt. 52 yards and there are no flags. Dave, I know Shepard gets the credit for this touchdown and it was really the gamble and the missed tackle by the defensive back that kind of forced that Darius rush. Number seven, Cam Johnson has to get some credit for his kind of shield block there at the end that didn't allow the South Carolina defenders to be able to catch him. Bullivus, a transfer from Alabama, splits the uprights on the point after. Mike Wright, three passes over 40 yards. This one goes 52 for a touchdown. Will Shepard, he is a playmaker, and he makes a play right here, and guess who has the lead? Vanderbilt, 17-14.
Dari Noka in studio 12 years ago. Lane Kiffin led Tennessee to a 7 and 6 record and then bolted for Southern Cal. Lane Kiffin about to make his first trip inside Neyland Stadium as a head coach since that 2009 season. Ole Miss and Tennessee coming up at 7.30 Eastern time. Thanks, Dari. Of course, he was there as an assistant with Alabama, but different when you walk when you're the leader of the team, and I'm sure he's uh, got some jitters heading into Neyland Stadium. Got to be able to control your emotions a little bit. And Mike Wright's done that very well today, hasn't he? It's his first start. He's definitely controlled his emotions. He's been able to make plays with his legs and be able to obviously find the right receivers. Shaheen Bell on the return out over the 20 yard line. Let's go down to, to Dre. What's up? Well, Deuce, you mentioned Cam Johnson's block on that last Vanderbilt touchdown, and he told me this week Coach Lee has done a really good job finding different ways to introduce stress and tension in practice. So when the team feels tense, they can work through it. Cam told me early in the season it was hard for them to keep their heads up when things went south, but they've really been focusing on flipping the script, creating momentum, and picking themselves up. Yeah, they've done a great job today defensively. They've given up a couple of big plays, but for the most part, they have kept everything in front of them. Trying to stretch it here to Quandre White. They'll get it out over the 25 to the 22 yard line. Gain of three and a half, maybe four when it's all said and done. But White getting his second series in a row. After not playing much, Juju McDowell, of course, not available today. Coach's decision, and there is an injured Vanderbilt Commodore. That's Chase Lowe. Chase pops up and jogs off. That's a good sign. Coke Zero Sugar and Wendy's are proud supporters of college football. Best combo ever. Been a good combo today. Mike Bright and Will Shepard. Been a pretty dynamic combination for the Vanderbilt offense. What will the combination be for South Carolina? Luke Doty today, 14 of 19, 202, couple of touchdowns. Big hole off the right side to Quandre White. Boy, running hard, still on his feet, down to the 45. Maybe that's the spark the Gamecocks need. He's a young man, Jacondre White, that has a lot of energy, nicknamed Quan. He's been able to just really uh, explode in his hole. The offensive line does a nice job of giving him a nice hole, and he's picked up the first down. 28-yard game. He'll give it right back to White. He'll get a couple of yards before he has stood up. Again, Zaquandre White, he started his career at Florida State, then went to Iowa Western Community College before finding his way to Columbia. Had a career high 129 yards in the opener. Was the most in an opening game since Deuce Staley went in 1996. Deuce could play a little bit. A little bit there. <laughs> Time you get your name mentioned with Deuce, you're doing something. Correct, correct. He's an offense coordinator up in Detroit right now. Long time over in Philadelphia with the Eagles. He doesn't spell his Deuce the same the right way, right? A little different. <laughs> over the middle, Bell has it! Tripped up at the 10-yard line. Dave, that's going to be coming down. That's going to be a holding on oh. your left tackle. Oh. That's coming back. It's oh. holding on your left tackle. He was beaten with the pressure. Left tackle is coming back. And Shane Beamer just shakes his head. And all of a sudden decides, hey, you know what? I can't let him see me. Got to fire him up. Not over. Long way to go. Holding offense, number 75. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat second down. It was an underneath move by Ricky Wright, and we'll see it here on, on, on the film. He does a nice job. He does a nice job of selling outside, and he, he's able to come underneath, and he just get, get, just pulls him down. And I was wondering when South Carolina was going to go vertical up the field as far as with some of their throws. We've seen them run a lot of bubble screens, quick throws for Luke Doty, but nothing really since the first quarter down the field, and that's the opportunity they do have, kind of similar to the same throw they had with 
to Henny Bale earlier for the touchdown, but this time it comes back. Marshawn Lloyd in at running back. Doty will throw it underneath. Try and Bell again. He tries to turn the corner. Nice gainer. Boy, they are using Bell every way imaginable here this afternoon. Well, he's definitely making a lot of plays for him, and this is basically almost a screen because you, you know that you're going to get coverage here, and you've got your receivers, everybody that's blocking, and he's just running an over route, a little shallow cross, and he's able to pick up, you know, a chunk of that yardage that they lost because of the hole. Bell, a guy that they use kind of as a multi-purpose tight end, if you will. and do the same thing with E.J. Jenkins. Split him off the line quite a bit. Here is Lloyd. Sees a little seam and picks up a bunch of yardage. Down to the 22, a gain of 18. You see the explosion by Lloyd here. He starts one way and he's able to cut it all the way back against the grain. And uh, you know, nice block by Joyner there, and you've got back-to-back -back plays where those running backs have been able to get out on the edge. First it was White, here's Lloyd being able to get out on the edge of that defense for Vanderbilt. Well, you got Van near side. Now they'll bring a little safety help that direction, but they'll run it to the near sideline. They'll go with White. South Carolina use a little outside zone here, and that's what White ends up doing it's to the short side of the field. Back on the ball using a little tempo. That's what one thing that they had a lot of success in the first quarter game. Seven penalties today for South Carolina for 58 yards. Two against Vanderbilt. thrown to the turf. Christian James with a big stop defensively. Loss of a yard. It'll be third down. It's one of the only times where we're really not a lot that you've seen this defensive line be able to fight off a few blocks, and he is the edge guy as far as the defensive end, and he's just able to fight off from a couple blocks and make that play. We've talked about how those running backs have been able to bounce plays or be able to hit to the outside that time, not able to get there. Five tackles for loss for this Vanderbilt defense. Third down and eight. Doty looking to throw. Steps up to the end zone. Batted away at the last moment. Trying to hit Josh Van, who goes flying head first into the hedges. Allen George back there in coverage. And it's fourth down, and here comes the field goal unit. To go route van has a shot at it but man that, that is close really nice job by alan george one thing that i'm probably upset about is the hedges they're so close right there to the end zone he had he, get, he he falls into those hedges hard 38 yard field goal attempt from parker white he was perfect this year white nine of nine kick on the way it is no good. His first miss, that typifies the day for South Carolina. It was a little tricky snap. But Parker White misses for the first time in 2021. Dave, I'm not going to say it. I don't know if, is, is that a little jinx by you? Or did the long no, it's snap? A it's a broadcaster jinx, there's no <laughs> doubt. It's real. Well, the snap was kind of a little bit, I don't want to call it low. It was manageable, though. That's yeah, it was definitely manageable. And that one, it just never comes across. It just pushes it outside just a little bit. I mean, you're talking about maybe a foot or two outside. So Vanderbilt's offense back on the field. This has been a big play offense today. Remember, they came into this game as the only team in the country without a play from scrimmage over 40 yards. They have three today. And off to Griffin. No game there. They have a play of 44 yards to Cam Johnson, 50-yard pass to Will Shepard, and a 52-yarder to Shepard that went for six. 
Now, if I'm Vanderbilt offense, I don't run another play this quarter. I don't like the first down calls. I mean, I think that they have, have got to get their quarterback, particularly on first down. They've got to get him on the edge. They've had a, 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 some pretty good success running QB bash on the outside. Uh, but second and long, that, 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 that's tough for any offense. That will be the final play of the third quarter. Vanderbilt has lost 15 straight conference games. South Carolina has lost nine straight conference games. It's 17-14. Commodores out in front. We have 15 minutes of football left. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Run it. We are set to start the fourth quarter from williams Bryce Stadium. Dave Neal, Deuce McAllister, Andrea Carter with you on this Saturday afternoon. And Mike Wright goes down. Zach Pickens with the sack. The 17th of the year for this South Carolina defense. Pickens just, Pickens just wins. I mean, he wins up front right away from that defensive tackle position. And so Mike Wright has probably had more success being able to throw slant route or, or, or glance route or the go route you know just him sitting in that pocket has not had a lot of success in that particular category and now you'll hear it get really really loud in here three and a half sacks for Pickens right throws it up and away so here comes the Vanderbilt punt unit the defense gets the stop they were looking for here in Columbia. Mike Wright now 9 of 18 for 207. Coach White talked about having guys up front on that defensive line where he didn't have to bring a lot of pressure. He can win with his defensive ends and Pickens as well as Jabbar Ellis giving him something inside where they can win as well. Harrison Smith. Flag is down. It's a rugby kick that takes a couple of big hops down to the 43 yard line. So we'll wait for these flags. I don't think Vanderbilt have enough guys on that formation on the line of scrimmage. Well, they were doing all kinds of shifting on a punt. And it's a long down and distance, so fourth and five, I can understand. Illegal formation, formation, kicking team. Kicking team. Number, 19 Number 19 was an ineligible player, player that shifted. It's a five-yard five penalty yard added to the end of the run. It'll be first down, first South, down Carolina. South Carolina. Timeout. We'll step aside, Gamecocks, with a relatively short field to work with. <laughs> SEC football final coming your way tonight. Hosted by Dari Noka with Gene Chiz and Chris Doring and Benjamin Watson. They'll take you through all the biggest stories of the day, break down all the games. Coming up right after Tennessee and Ole Miss, roughly 10.30 Eastern time. Best show on the network. Well, I shouldn't say that because Andre is down there. Maybe second best to Andre's show. First and 10 line brought to you by our friends at T-Mobile. Pass is caught there by Xavier Leggett. Leggett has been a factor today. It's down the field throw, and they fake kind of the bubble screen that they've been throwing. You've got a post, and then you've got an out route by Le Leggett, or at least a corner route. Nice throw and catch by Luke Doty to him. I think it's a tie for first. With Andrea <laughs> show. Yeah, we got a pool for our home team. Yeah. I mean, Andrea did pick an upset winner in LSU today. Here goes Zaquandre White. Flag down in the backfield. Right tackle, Malik Langham being hailed. Holding offense, number 54. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Call it on the guard, actually. So, I mean, that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a tough one in that situation because the guard, you know, 
these backs have been bouncing a lot of those runs, but in those situations, you don't know exactly where he's going just because it's a zone run, and so you feel that defender trying to pull away. And you get a tendency trying to pull him just a little bit, and that time it was too much. So from midfield, first down and 20. Luke Doty today, 16 to 22, 227. Underneath, that one's incomplete, trying to hit Van. Excuse me, to carry on Joyner. Ethan Bart does a nice job on the coverage. Vanderbilt only rushing three guys there. And Bart sees the running back Joyner come across his face, and he goes and covers him. Covers him. So nice job of dropping eight defenders in the zone and being able to force Luke Doty to check it down. Intercepted on the back end by Deshaun Jerkins. Another South Carolina turnover. Three today by the Gamecocks. Dodie's going to look at himself, and I don't know if it was his, his footwork or that ball just got away from him. And, and it's almost like he's forcing this play there. There's a play to be had. There's a play that you can make, and it's going to Joyner in that situation. But, I mean, that ball sailed on him. Just a really nice job of Jerkins being able to go up high and make that catch. First down and 10, Commodores. Second interception of the year for Deshaun Jerkins. His first career interception came last week against the Gators. Talking about back-to-back -back weeks being able to come up with big plays for that defense. And so Vanderbilt offense, they had a three and out earlier. Get some positive yardage this time on first down. Let's see if they go to the quarterback run or they attempt another pass. Like getting him on the edge where he has the option to be able to throw or run. Don't like him just as a pure drop back passer having to read a lot of options. Right, spins out of trouble and again just heaves it out of bounds. Pressure came from JJ Ignock in McBarre. Him as a drop back passer, if it hadn't been just the glance route or the fade route, it, 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 it's been off target. And so for him, it's been about moving. It's been about giving him the option to be able to run. Right there, he's trying to create, he's trying to make a move in the pocket. But South Carolina's done a really nice job for the most part of covering on the back end. You know, you have to make him be a playmaker if you're Vanderbilt and allow him to be able to run a little bit or have the option of running as far as the quarterback is concerned. Ethan Barre, who's usually been in the backfield most of the season, but with Mike Wright's ability to spin out of trouble, kept him quiet. Pass is caught by Smith, lost the football, will fall on it way back at the 20-yard line. He would have been at fourth and about two, punting situation regardless. Man, he's going to be short of the first down, and he just runs a hitch route here, and it's just a nice job by that defense of being able to come up with that strip defensively. Cam Smith is the player that caused it. And obviously, Wright is able to jump back on it. I mean, I, I, the receiver is able to jump back on it. Will Shepard. Cam Smith, they're glad to have him back after missing last week. He's probably their best cover guy. That takes a favorable Vanderbilt bounce inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line, a 51-yard punt. South Carolina has the football. They are trailing by a field goal here in the fourth. Dory Noka in studio. Last week, we saw number one Alabama lose to an unranked Texas A&M team. We are watching number two Iowa lose to an unranked Purdue team. Boilermakers, couple of minutes from pulling the shocker at Kinnick, guys. Wow. How about Cincinnati now? Right? I mean, they put on a clinic today against UCF. They're in a prime position right now. And you're, if you're a one-loss team, you're kind of worried because you feel like if Cincinnati continues to win, that they're going to be 
Or one of those teams that are trying for a uh, playoff position. Mm. Iowa's dream season might be coming to a, a stop in a matter of moments. Speaking of stops, Vanderbilt's had a couple of late, including an interception. The last time South Carolina's offense was on the field, they'll hand it off to Quandre White. But we have not seen Kevin Harris here in the second half. Last year's leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference. Not much of a factor today. Matter of fact, Harris today, six carries, 35 yards. Just wonder if he's okay physically at this point. Yeah, that's that, that surprising. I mean, because you talk about him being just a major factor of that offense and really having success last week, and you wanted that run game to get going. It's really been White and Lloyd that have gotten the majority of snaps at tailback. Third down, and let's call it two. Van comes in motion, sets up in the slot, flags come out. That's going to be against South Carolina. They were early and they were trying to run a bootleg. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 62. Five yard penalty it remains third down. Shane Beamer is going to lose his mind. Nine penalties today for his game cops. Penalties and turnovers. That's a bad combo. <laughs> Very bad combo. Saw his father coming in to the stadium today. Talked to him for a bit. Such a great family. That one is incomplete. It sails over the head of Nick Muse. I don't know if he was the intended target or not. There was a receiver running behind him, but it was short of him, and it was too long for Muse. Pressure, and it was pressure in the face of Nick Doty. And, I mean, Luke Doty in there. You talk about wanting to hit Nick Muse down the scene, but it is pressure. Vanderbilt has, has, has brought a lot of different pressures, that being the sixth time that they've been able to get a pressure on the quarterback, and you come up with an incomplete on third and long. Kudos to Jesse Minner, the defensive coordinator for Vanderbilt, has put together a nice plan today. He was boomed out of bounds. Cam Johnson chases it out of bounds. So Vanderbilt with a three-point lead, getting late, trying to snap this 15-game conference skid. Quick drop. Pass is caught. Cam Johnson spins out of trouble. Did he get in? Down Vanderbilt ball hit behind the line. Does he get in? Yes, he does. Setting up the screen to Keyshawn Vaughn. Keyshawn breaks the tackle. It's now a foot race, and Keyshawn Vaughn will break the tape. Vanderbilt has shocked Missouri. Almost two years to the day since Vanderbilt's last conference win. That was against Missouri. Here they're leading by three. On the road at Williams Bryce Stadium with their backup quarterback going the distance because Ken Seals is out with an injury today. And Mike Wright has done a stand up job. 10 of 20, 204 through the air. He has also led the team in rushing, has 43 yards on 12 carries. But you know what he's done? He hasn't made any. Any blunders that has cost his team. And there he did a good job of being able to hold the football. The safety he wanted to hit Will Shepard on that post, but the safety did a nice job of being able to get back into the play. And instead of him forcing a pass, he ended up just running the football. Yeah, not a lot of negative plays. They'll toss it to Griffin. Turns the corner, and he's out over the 25 to the 27. Sets up a third down and a couple, maybe three. And Smith coming up to trip up Griffin. But this, you talked about it during the commercial, Deuce. This is a big down right now for Vanderbilt because their defense has been on the field a bunch. Well, their defense has been on the field a bunch, and they've been able to create some turnovers. You talk about the fumble. You talk about coming up with the interception. And for this Vanderbilt offense, they haven't been able to convert. They haven't been able to pick up a first down. And so I think it's crucial for them to be able to at least convert for a first down to keep that defense off the field. Closing in on eight minutes to go. Third down and three. Right, keeps it, cuts it back. He's not going to get there. 
He'll be stopped after a yard gain. They're going to have to send a punt team out here. They're just trying to set up a, uh, this option football. And South Carolina does a nice job of being having two guys there for the quarterback. And you're talking about somebody being there for the pitch man. And, you know, this is back to back to back possessions for that South Carolina defense. They come up with stops where their offense hadn't been particularly successful either. So Harrison Smith back on the field to punt it away. Josh Van back to return. They have not given Van much of an opportunity at all today in the return game. So 7.23 to play. Gamecocks down three, but they have the football. Worth a watch is brought to you by Principal Financial Group, and this is certainly worth a watch. Deuce, the go-ahead touchdown for Vanderbilt. Nice job by Shepard being able to just to break the tackle. You have a hometown throw from right, and then like we talked about, it, it was Cam that came through. Cam jumped to number seven, came through, and kind of almost gave like a shield block just to keep those defenders away from him. Vanderbilt's run 52 plays. This will be the 54th play for South Carolina. Coming near side, not a whole lot of room to run. And matter of fact, this could be a substantial loss for South Carolina. So Quandre White just nowhere to go as Vandy stretches it. That'll be a loss of seven. Well, they're trying to run that outside zone play. And, you know, when, when it's not there, you have to be able to get north and south. He does a nice job of being able to stop the plant. But then he slips. And by that time, you talk about the pursuit defense. Alex Williams does a nice job of just being able to come up and clean everything up. But when you're running outside zone and you don't have it, you have to put your foot in the ground and get what you can. Because if not, you're putting yourself behind the chains. Drops eight over the middle. They find a little bit of a hole. That'll go to E.J. Jenkins. His first catch today. That's 15. It'll be a yard shot. Nice shot of going upstairs high and being able to get this catch and put him in third and short. Helps being 6-7. And there's the first down carry by White. So they pick up the 16 and a half yards they needed for the first down. Ethan Barr with another stop. That Vanderbilt defense has been able to hold up. You talked about them dropping eight defenders on that previous play or two plays before. You know, I expect them to try, try to turn up some pressure here against Luke Doty. Swing it near side. White, big collision right at midfield. South Carolina scored on their first two possessions. This is their... They've had nine possessions, I should say, since those touchdowns where they have not produced a point. Not a point at all. You had a field goal attempt was really the only other time that they had an opportunity to score, score some points. I mean, but you talk about uh, they, they went for it one time on fourth down, did convert. You had a, a couple of turnovers. So uh, uncharacteristic things that they've been doing from an offensive standpoint after having a lot of success on those first two drives. Bringing some pressure now. Doty hit as he throws. Intercepted again. Ethan Barr with the pick. He will have it out around midfield. Barr had his first career interception against Georgia a few weeks back, and he picks up number two. Dave, I just said that we saw them play coverage, and this time it's pressure off of the edge, and they were able to get that. The Ricky Wright has been outstanding just coming off of the edge, and he, he, he's being able to, he forces this play to be thrown quick, and, and so you never have a chance if you're Luke Doty to really be able to drive through the football. Uh, I thought he did a pretty good job as far as setting his feet, but he never was able to really get that football to where he wanted to, and Barr played that perfectly in the zone. He comes up with the interception. Jesse Minner told us that we have to start to affect the quarterback when he throws the football. Now, he wasn't talking about getting him to the ground, but you got to look at this pile. Wow, what a run from Rocco Griffin. 
He'll pick up the first down and give him 13 yards. That's a frustrated defense right there. I mean, you're, you're, you're probably talking about this should have been at best a three-yard game. And Rocco Griffin, he just gets behind those big offensive linemen, and they just continue to push that pile, push that pile. I thought maybe South Carolina was going for the ball as far as the strip was concerned, and that wasn't the case. It was just it, nobody got low enough to be able to tackle Griffin up around the legs. They can chew up some of this clock now. A little toss sweep to Rocco. Pick up three there. We talked about chewing up that, that clock there. Nice block there by Tyler Steen out on the edge. And if you're the defensive back, you're saying, hey, look, that's a holding play. And the refs allowed them to play it. Griffin does a nice job of being able to pick up four or five yards. South Carolina has just owned Vanderbilt. They've won straight, uh, 12 straight versus the Commodores, and they've won 26 of 30 in this series. The whistles will stop this play. That may be a delay of game. I don't, I, I don't know if it was a delay of game, but I mean, it was definitely a snap from the quarterback, the Ricky, I mean, uh, Mike Wright. He was not ready for the football. That's our back judge. There's a flag all the way back at the 15. Yeah, well, he threw the flag. Delay of game, defense, disconcerting signal. Ah. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Second time I've seen that in two weeks. Well, they're out there yelling, and it, 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 it's a signal call. And so, uh, from an offensive standpoint, there was still about 12, 12 seconds on the play clock. And so, it was, it was number 12. It was a safety. It was a safety. It was Jalen Foster. Yeah, it was Jalen Foster that claps. He claps right there about. Oh, about, yeah. Uh, he claps. It was him that clapped, and so the ref, the, the, the judge, the, the lineman behind him, he, that's why he threw the flag. There was about 12 seconds left on the play clock, and so the snap came. Mike Wright was not even ready for it, but it was Foster that ended up clapping. Clark Lee wanted the play clock to start immediately. Now he's going to have his quarterback take his time. Three and a half to go. Commodores hand off Rocco Griffin. He takes it to the 25. He might have enough for the first down. And they will move the chains. Let's go downstairs. Andrea, what's up? Yeah, guys, just a quick South Carolina update. Zeb Nolan was behind the bench warming up, and he has put his helmet on on the sidelines. We'll see if they use him instead of Luke Doty. That would be an interesting change with three minutes to go in a game. Definitely saw I saw him warming up here you know, uh, one of the coaches. They were trying to hit the crossbar from about 45 yards He came within inches of doing so so it'll be interesting to see if they make that change Got to get a stop here first as well though. First down and 10 clock now approaching 245 Rocco Griffin cuts it back Rocco twists and turned down to the 15 yard line brought down there by RJ Roderick But that's another first down and you're gonna if you're South Carolina, you got to use a timeout. You got to start using some of those timeouts right here. Just a nice run inside zone. And we talked about that defensive line not giving up any yardage inside uh, this drive. That's been a different case. Vanderbilt has been able to find up front. That defense has been soft. Wherever fun happens, Academy Sports and Outdoors is there. Clark Lee trying to pick up his first conference win as Vanderbilt's head coach, the former Commodore himself back in the early 2000s as a fullback, got in the coaching business and fell in love with the defensive aspect of it was a linebacker coach forever then became defensive coordinator at Notre Dame and still locks in on the defense asking him about how he handles that he says you know I, I try to be a coach to every aspect of my team but it's hard to stay away from the defense he, he inches over there <laughs> here's Griffin off the left side he's inside the 10 Another timeout here by South Carolina. I mean, they, they have to. 
figure out a way to get some stops from a defensive standpoint, counter play, and they, I mean, there's just room. There's a bunch of room to run. Whether you're talking about Rocco Griffin or your quarterback at some some. Don't forget, coming up, we're up at 7.30 Eastern time. It'll be Tennessee, Matt Corral, taking on the Rebels. Corral, certainly last week, fantastic performance. Got to be one of your top two or three favorites for a Heisman Trophy, as long as his club can continue to have some success in the win column. Boy, Matt Corral has just been fabulous. Love watching him play. He's so calm, cool, and collected, but tough as nails. Such an exciting offense under Lane Kiffin. Tennessee is becoming an exciting offense under Josh Heupel. They've been airing it out, trying to get 80, 90 plays a game. Should be a ton of fun in Knoxville tonight. A full house. Tom Jordan, Cole on the call, coming up 7:30. Tonight, do you look at the SEC standings? Georgia, of course, get a little separation after they put it on Kentucky today. Griffin hitting the backfield. It'll be third down. He'll lose a yard, and that'll be the last time out for South Carolina. The key here, you got to keep him to a field goal, right? Give yourself an opportunity. Touchdown, this thing's over. Yeah, touchdown, this thing's over. And I'm really surprised that Wright didn't have the option to pull that football. They've run the, that counter play a couple of times, and they've been able to get a lot of positive yards. I, I figured at some point uh, South Carolina was going to have a run blitz, and that's what they were able to hit him with and be able to make that tackle in the backfield. And so, you know, if, if I'm South Carolina, I am giving Mike Wright the opportunity to run, but not, not, not necessarily with just an option play. I'm going to be able to put him on the edge and make him make a play, let him make a play. Well, South Carolina's problem has been turnovers and penalties, but mainly these turnovers. They have coughed it up four times, a couple of fumbles, two interceptions. Vanderbilt has put together 14 points off those four turnovers. This was Jerkins with that interception, and Ethan Barr with his second pick of the season snuffed out their last drive, and this has been a problem just the little things even when they had some success in the second half a penalty would bring back a big play yeah, it would be a big play and then you'd have a holding play i mean yeah, or, or, or it would be hey look we're third and short we, we got a five yard uh penalty because of false starts so they hurt themselves a lot with penalties and turnovers so third and seven mike wright dumps it off Cam johnson nowhere to go to the 10 yard line but South Carolina cannot stop the clock. Plenty of time still left on the clock. I mean, even if you run it all the way down and you end up kicking this field goal right now, he's going to leave his offense out on the field. It's got to be. There's no way that you can't be running the play at this, this juncture. They're trying to get him to jump off sides, I think, on fourth down and five. Anything, you're just going to call a timeout with one second on the play clock. And that's exactly what they do. So a minute 40 to go. Ball sits on the far hash mark, centered on the 10 yard line. Let's take a look at the MVP of the game brought to you by Sports Clips. Mike Wright in an emergency start as Ken Seal is unable to go. Has kept the Vanderbilt offense out of some serious trouble today. He's done a nice job being able to scramble and create. And then you also talk about being able to get the football to Will Shepard and some of those playmakers, Cam Johnson, on that last play. So he's done a nice job coming in for Ken Seals. And just trying to make some plays for that offense. All right, 28 yard field goal attempt on the way from Bulovas, who's made it from 42, missed all three last week. This kick on the way, and it is dead, solid, perfect. It is a six point game. Ken Seals, he knows it was good. Nice drive, nice finish. 
you force South Carolina to use all of their timeouts. South Carolina. Here's a kick again, just being able to come through, follow through completely. Nice hold, nice snap. Laces not necessarily facing the kicker, a little bit to the side. Well, other than last week, Bulovus has been solid, has a couple of game winners. I don't know if you classify this as a game winner, but it was clutch. It's going to force South Carolina to go the length of the field. Or we'll see how far they have to go with a minute 36 on the clock and no timeouts. No timeouts, and I do think, like Andrea said, it will be it'll be Nolan. It'll be Zeb that'll come out for this next drive. Zeb Nolan, who started the first couple of games because Doty's foot injury kept him on the sidelines. Here's the kick. It will sail into the end zone, and South Carolina will take over at the 25. Well, here comes Zeb Nolan, the graduate, transferred in. Was it actually a graduate assistant coach before putting on the pads before the season when they realized Doty couldn't go? Started his career at Iowa State, then went to North Dakota State out of Watkinsville, Georgia. This would be one of the most improbable storylines ever written if he could march him down the field for a game winner with 136 to play. Four-man rush near side. Here's White on the reception, and he gets out of bounds. A couple of yards. Yeah, doesn't gain a lot of yards, but I think the most important is getting out of bounds. That's probably the most important thing, and so you're going to see a array of coverages that time. You see Vanderbilt kind of run a, a, a twist up, up front, insert late, a fourth guy, but they're really playing coverage there, and so you'll see them bring a little pressure. You'll see them play coverage just to kind of mix it up here on Zeb Nolan. Nolan had completed 57% of his passes coming into this with five touchdowns, four of them in the opener. Nolan slings it wide open over the middle. Pass caught there by Muse. He's into Vanderbilt territory. Clock will stop. 122 to play. That's a gain of 31. Plenty of time. Nice job. Nice understanding and knowing where he wanted to go with the football. I just thought in that particular situation, Vanderbilt is playing too soft of a coverage. Nice throw by Zeb Nolan to Nick Muse. Tight ends getting a ton of work today for South Carolina. Bell, Muse, Jenkins, all have made catches today. Three-man rush. Nolan slings it far side. Incomplete. Trying to hit Josh Van. They're going to rule it incomplete. No real damage done. Minute 15 on the clock. Plenty of time. You've got to come up with a touchdown in the extra point. This time he's trying to work that sideline again. Vanderbilt dropping eight guys into coverage. I don't know if that, that, that looked like it may have been a catch. Unless he bobbled that football, that may have been a catch. The play clock got plenty of time on that clock. Three-man rush again. Coming near side. White can't handle it. They'll say incomplete. A minimum gain at best there. So incomplete is probably works in your favor. What hurts you is the third, third down. Vanderbilt has not brought pressure at all. They've stuck with coverage. See if they do decide to at least bring a has brought four guys, but not a fifth yet. Rushing three. Over the middle. Pass is caught there to the 31-yard line. Van with the reception. A gain of 14. They'll set the change, and the clock will start. No timeouts for the Gamecocks. Still rushing three. Nolan lofts it up, has a man at the 10. It's Van again out of bounds. Excuse me, Joyner on that catch. A gain of 21. And the Gamecocks knocking on the door.
Vanderbilt's going to get a timeout here. Zed Nolan. It was a remarkable story when he suited up for the opener. The story just keeps getting better. Joiner shakes free and sets up South Carolina inside the 10. South Carolina is really just covering grass. They're not covering any area. When you talk about dropping, dropping eight guys into coverage, I mean, you got to be able to at least get close to somebody. And so you've got multiple guys, whether it's been Van, whether it's been Joiner or Nick Muse, all of those guys have had plenty of room. You know, I thought that the success that Vanderbilt was having was bringing pressure throwing, you know, showing some exotic packages, but they have given Zeb Nolan plenty of time to be able to sit in and find those soft spots in that zone, and he's been able to do it. Dave, you've talked about a field goal does him no good. It has to be a touchdown in the extra point. Zeb Nolan has come in, completed four of six for 66 yards on this drive. Nolan looking to the end zone, drops it off underneath. That'll be incomplete. It's a little bit behind to Levette there on that Levette there on that throw, and he's being covered by Ethan Barr. And I am totally surprised that they have not brought pressure. And they've decided just to sit in coverage as far as zone is concerned and try to let those front three guys try to get pressure. See what they do here. Looks like another three-man rush. Nolan over the middle. Back in the end zone. Touchdown, South Carolina. Leggett hangs on. Zeb Nolan for 58 minutes was a spectator. He just changed the entire game. Parker White, perfect this year in point afters with a chance to give South Carolina the lead. And he does. You can't make this up. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Zeb Nolan, he sits on, on, like you said, on the sideline. I saw him warming up earlier, and like I said, he, he was throwing it with one of the assistant coaches. They were trying to hit the crossbar. He was with, probably within a foot. Here on this touchdown throw, he's able to just go through progression after progression, and Barr almost gets a hand on it, but Leggett is coming, running just an over route, and he's running what, what, what you call kind of the, the baseline or the back of the end zone. And he comes across, he's able to get really two feet down. He gets two feet inside, holds on to the football. And just a nice job of running that over route, just being able to get in the path of the quarterback to be able to come up with a huge touchdown. You see him and Luke Doty on the sideline celebrating. And this crowd wakes how about, up. How about Leggett? No catches all year and has four today, including what could be the game winner. A heck of a grab in the end zone. This one gets away from Vanderbilt, and they're all the way back inside the 10-yard line with 35 seconds to play. Couple things there. If you're that up back, you have to pick that ball up. I know that you want to, you know, normally let it get to your returners, but if you pick it up, you get it at about the 20 25. If you can take a knee there, but you can't allow that ball to just continue to roll past you and pass you and almost kind of jump out of the way just because you have timeouts 
and you have better field possessions. Now you talk about having to go at least 91 yards for a touchdown, but you can still get in field goal range. It's, it's still going to be tough. Mike Wright at quarterback. Three-man rush. At the goal line, loses the football. South Carolina has it. South Carolina will win this. Enag Mari with a play to force the fumble. How many different ways can Vanderbilt lose a game? You talk about a crushing defeat. This will be a crushing defeat. I mean, I thought their defense did enough for them. And you go back and you look at this play. It's a typical drop back. They're only rushing three three guys. But, I mean, he's able to win. J.J. is able to win off of the edge. He beats that left tackle. And there's nothing Tyler Steen can do. And he's able to strip it away. And big number 99, Jabari Ellis, comes up with the recovery. And so that defense finally comes through they, they were holding them holding them you go back and you think about that field goal attempt that they forced instead of giving up that touchdown and yep that changed the game for him zeb nolan though off the bench leads this team to a victory mike wright heck of a game not enough today the sixth year senior zeb nolan was a coach they had to get a waiver. Shane Beamer picks up his first Southeastern Conference win. They lost to Georgia, Kentucky, and Tennessee. But today, they take down Vanderbilt 21-20. Vanderbilt's conference string goes to 16 consecutive losses. South Carolina stops their streak at nine. And the Gamecocks have won 13 straight over Vanderbilt now. Wow, what a story. Zeb Nolan on that last drive, five of eight, 75 yards and a touchdown. Let's go down to Andre. Coach Beamer, Zeb Nolan comes in the game for one drive and saves it. How did he do it? He's just a warrior, man. I'm so proud of that guy. <laughs> ah! I'm so proud of that guy. He, um, he's just a great teammate. Stayed ready throughout the game. Uh, Coach Satterfield, we tell him there's going to be a movie made about him, and that was all part of the story right there, the way he won that thing. But he stays into it. He helps Luke throughout the game. And, uh, you know, what, what a player. What a player. Um, we talk about dominating the fourth quarter, and we made it as ugly as it possibly could. If you do, like, a, a textbook story on how to lose football games, we did it all today, but, man, they found a way to win. They never flinch. I love this group. They're, 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 they're unbelievable. Well, after that touchdown, we made eye contact, and you just shook your head and smiled. What were you thinking in that moment? Just what hair I have is turning gray fast. Whatever I have left is falling out. But that's just how we win football games right now. We talk about just getting games into the fourth quarter and finding ways to win them in the fourth quarter. And it ain't always pretty, but these kids, they fight their butts off. They never flinch. They come to work every day. And, man, I love coaching them. And when things were going rough and things were looking like maybe you were going to take a loss, what did you feel on the sidelines from this group? Just never flinched. Hang on. Get that hand up, man. Um... Just no panic. You know, my favorite part of the game was the offense goes out there for the last drive, and as much as we've stunk it up throughout the game, you saw the whole defense come down there and get in the huddle with the offense to cheer them on and be a great teammate. That's what it's all about. We may not always be pretty, but we got a hell of a football team at there, and, 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 and we got something special going here, and we're just getting started. Coach Beamer, an ugly win is a win. Congratulations. <laughs> I'll take it. Thanks. Congrats. Back to you, Dave. Well, his dad, Frank Beamer, in attendance today, giving him some more gray hairs. What a thrilling game in Columbia. For Deuce and Andrea, I'm Dave. So long, let's get you to Dari.